Okay, it's time. It's been approximately two years, maybe a little longer, since I did my first toolbox tour of my 84 inch Epic Series standard drawer layout. Did purchase it brand new, even took it off the pallet. As you can see, the first big change is now we are currently in my home garage. I no longer turn a wrench professionally However, I still do side jobs out of my garage. <clears throat> I do all of the work on my family's cars as well as my own. And I will continue to do so until I'm no longer physically able. So for that reason, I do still purchase tools off of tool trucks or websites, what have you. It's a lifetime investment and it'll stay that way. So we'll just get right into it on the top. Nothing has changed in the background, just the trinkets and, you know, fun stuff. Some equipment I used to work on. All right, so this is the power bank, not the power drawer. The power drawer does come with a little bit more cubic inches of storage. You'll lose a little bit with the power bank, but I do prefer this. Not much has changed in here since the first tour. Three-quarter inch Ingersoll Rand. Uh, quick note on this, if you're a heavy duty truck mechanic or equipment mechanic and you don't have one of these, you should really start saving up for one and this should be your primary investment. This should come before any box ever, period. This is a must have. Half inch cordless, half inch air, the drill, three ace cordless. Yes, we don't need to get into it with this thing. It's been warrantied. Three ace air. Angle grinders. Straight grinders. You'll see the flashlight on top of the box. The one that came with this set here. This quarter inch chuck. This is not the one with the clutch. It's the smaller version. Love this 14.4 little guy some extra batteries and then down here that's in the back an Ingersoll Rand air hammer Cornwall air drill this is your attachments uh, some saws air fittings all the attachments for the grinders the discs whatnot and then the sawzall so as far as snap-on cordless tool goes uh if you're watching this video you're familiar with them and the other brands out on the market but i will say this sawzall is awesome it's never let me down it's very powerful for what it is and is my favorite cordless snap-on tool all right now the top drawer in my top drawer I put the sockets and anything relating to a socket just a quick overview of everything in the drawer these top drawers are 64 inches long and 30 inches deep however I will say that there's a lip right here and you cannot put your sockets all the way back up against the back wall to get the full 30 inches because it's really hard to see, but you have this stupid lip right here. And when you lift your socket up, you won't be able to get it out. So you cannot use all 30 inches of the top drawer. I guess structural reasons, I would guess, but I'm no engineer, I don't know. So for half inch sockets, not much has changed. They're gray pneumatic. All of my half inch drive sockets are gray pneumatic. Same thing here. So these are extra length or extra long, whatever you wanna call them, for doing boom cable adjustments on large booms like that. So every year you have to torque the cables down and make sure they're not, there's no slack, make sure they're not too tight and you need those really long sockets to get at them. So, 3 ace drive impact, 
their snap-on. All of my impact sockets are the same age and they've always been stored in the same toolbox together. But look at the condition between the gray pneumatic sockets and these ridiculously overpriced snap-on sockets. So some of these little onesies and twosies I've replaced because I've just lost them or they've shattered. But for everyone who talks about fit and finish for snap-on sockets, let's get something clear. That fit and finish only refers to their chrome sockets because their impacts are fucking garbage. Pardon my language. Look at this. Versus all of these, which have always been stored right behind them, not in any different spot. So what the hell? Moving on. All of my three ace chrome sockets are snap on. And you'll see they're on these Craftsman socket racks. Anything I need to pull out of this box is on a Craftsman socket rack. I'm pretty sure I'm going to put all my quarter inch drive stuff on a socket rack as well instead of the tray. Just some swivels. 3 ace drive. And then we'll get into all of the Allen heads, Torx bits, tamper proof Torx and inverted Torx. All of these are, excuse me, most of them are Snap-on or Blue Point. I did buy that, whatever Matco's generic is, I can't remember, but they have a huge set of all these Torx. This all, most of these came in one big set. However, these didn't, these are all Snap-on. And they're all on the Craftsman socket trays, or excuse me, socket rack. These things are fantastic. They're very durable. They hold up a long time, and they do support a lot of weight. So something like this one right here, extremely heavy. But I want to show you something. I'm holding it all. I don't need to support it. They're flexible. They're not brittle. I couldn't say enough about them. They work great. The really long... Allen sockets, snap on, some ratchets. Most of them are snap on. There's three of them that aren't. You can tell which ones are and which ones aren't. So we got this half inch, this three ace, and this quarter inch are not, the rest are. I am a huge fan of the ratchets. So we have in the back tucked away, the 36 inch breaker bar snap on that thing is awesome and if you're doing heavy duty stuff it's uh you'll use it i promise the 24 inch long half inch drive ratchet some really long extensions both three ace and half inch again if you're going to be working on booms that's or reach forks you're going to need it you'll see the torque wrenches uh Reasonably priced half-inch drive Craftsman and the very overpriced but high-quality Snap-on. This is not the digital. It is the basic click style. So let's talk about that for a second. Had this and used it for many years, but I needed one that went down to 15 inch-pounds to do torque measurements on boom cables. And this one skips gears every once in a while. So you'll go to use it, uh, maybe like a head bolt or a tire lug nut, whatever it is that you really need to torque down. And it'll skip a tooth or skip a gear. I absolutely do not want that. So the whole purpose behind a torque wrench is for accuracy. This hasn't broke on me, but it is the quality is uh, you get what you pay for. You know, this thing's like $89 or something, and I don't even know what this is. It's like the cost of your firstborn, but it's worth it. So get it. Some hex grips for rounded off lug nuts. You'll get a lot of those if you live in the rust belt. Don't use those for work. These are for like side jobs and shit. In the back, now coming onto the right side of the box, we're getting into the metrics so I have uh, shallow and deep from 36 millimeter all the way down to 10 millimeter again these are all gray pneumatic half inch drive 
The 3H drive is all snap-on. Let's compare the finish to these chrome sockets. Yep. This snap-on set is a kabajillion dollars, and this gray pneumatic set was like 300. And look at the difference. Hmm. Awesome. I mean, really? Ridiculous. So, 3H drive, shallow, deep. These are all snap-on. Couple of chromes to finish out the 3H drive deep set. Quarter inch drive. And some swivels, your most common sizes, 11 or 12 piece set. Uh, I don't think I spoke about these yet. This is just a lug nut wrench for tractor, tandem axle, single axle, whatever. Some extended or extra long spark plug sockets. Here's the rest of that set. It's from Mac. It's like their large spark plug socket set. As far as quality goes, uh, well, so far each one I've used, the rubber grommet now comes out and I have to put it back in by hand every single time. So the ones that I have used, quality, uh, it's Mac. In my opinion, you don't get the highest quality when you go with Mac. That's just my opinion. Uh, another reason for that is this right here. This is the... Mac Tools Turbo Socket or Extractor Socket Set. This is the worst socket, rack, rail, whatever you want to call it, I've ever used. They do not stay on, and that's why they're in a bubble, or excuse me, in a pile in my box. So Sears went out of business, and they closed up, so I have not been able to get into a local one and buy their Craftsman socket racks. I know other companies are starting to stock crafts and stuff, but I can only find them on eBay and I don't use eBay. So that's another story. Specialty stuff. Well, I guess not really specialty, but some swivels, adapters, stuff like that, all sizes. Some generic brand extensions. Don't need to go too crazy. Um, Wobble Plus quarter inch drive snap on I lost the short one so this is just an off-brand filling this void until I can order a new one the 3 ace drive wobble plus locking extensions snap on so here's an overall view of the drawer again I do continue to purchase tools because I'll probably never stop side jobs at least not at the moment we'll get into the wrench drawer we'll start on the left side again let's talk about hydraulic wrenches or angle wrenches whatever you want to call them I spent probably the better part of six months researching companies that have a specific offset I believe it's a 30 degree and a 60 degree offset. Don't quote me on that. It's been about two years since I've professionally turned a wrench, excuse me, not quite that long, one year, uh, and I cannot remember that exact offset. It could be, I'm pretty sure it's that. But Matco and Snap-on were at the time that I purchased these, the only two manufacturers who had this offset. And this same piece set from 3 eighths inch all the way to inch and a quarter and snap on was like $1,100. Ridiculous. So the Matco one, I paid, I think it was like 650 bucks for this whole set. One of the best purchases I've ever made for this box. So again, if you're working on stuff like this, booms, or equipment or anything with hydraulics uh you're gonna need these i guess not need them but it'll man it will save you time and effort knuckles and swearing moving on craftsman back in the day when it was made in the good old usa so this was one of the first set of wrenches i've ever purchased and I had every intention of upgrading to the snap-on wrenches 
when my Craftsman wrenches broke or just weren't cutting it anymore. Well, here we are 10 years later and these good old USA Craftsman wrenches have never ever let me down. So here they stay, not replaced with snap-on wrenches. One thing I will say is the thickness. Yeah, I grabbed a big wrench, but they're all like this. So these wrenches are super thick. There will be times when this will bite you in the ass and you can't use it because you can't get it in there. Whereas a professional, a more professional or expensive brand such as Mac or Snap-on are a little bit thinner and they would work better for you. So here's one that I cut just to, uh, to use. I just needed this part. Uh, and bought another one. That's a plus side to Craftsman wrenches. Uh, again, these were all purchased back when they were made in the good old USA. You could go to your local Sears and grab it off the shelf and pay for it. But that's another story, another video. It's a lot easier and less heartbreaking to cut a $15 or $30 wrench than it is to take a you know, $120 snap-on wrench and cut it. Some stubbies. This is a Proto. Yep. They make good stuff. Reasonably priced. Some Allens. Again, just some big stuff. Cheap line wrenches. Craftsman metric. And then your gear wrench ratcheting swivel head. Fantastic. Highly recommend them. Some smaller sizes. 24 inch blue point. Adjustable. You need big stuff if you're working on big equipment. Or big trucks. Big pry bar. There's the drawer. I will probably never upgrade to the snap-on wrenches. Again, these Craftsman ones have never let me down, so there they stay. Starting in the middle, we'll go to the first drawer. Some hand tools, tin snips, all these clean handled snap ring pliers. Don't use snap rings very often, usually only when rebuilding hydraulic cylinders. And even them, not a lot of times. Some adjustables. A lot of Craftsman stuff in here, people. Stuff's great. Well, it was when it was made in the USA. Old starter set. This was like my first starter set. And I've just walked into my first job with like this and a simple socket set. And that was it. You don't need much to get started, people. Screwdrivers, picks, a couple of different sets in here. Love green, if you haven't noticed, but we have, back in the day, Mac came out with this huge set, like a full set of their screwdrivers. So I have that big ass set, plus the snap-on one, some of their cabinet screwdriver set, little stubbies for the tight spots. Spark plug pullers. I probably use this set more than any other one. The little small ones, awesome. This is a door handle cable. And then the trim puller. All that stuff so you don't have to completely disassemble it. Uh, for GMs. Some files. Non-marring picks. Old Pittsburgh pick set. First one I ever purchased. The Mac Serpentine Belt Toolkit. This thing's a lifesaver, especially if you're working on semis or tandem max, or excuse me, uh, semi trucks or tractors. Um, the distance for putting on the serpentine belt, so you'd have to either climb up on the top, climb down on the bottom, keep going back and forth, or just use this. It will save you a ton of time. So long picks, short picks. Hose cutter, and then another file set.
Okay, I'll careful when you close your drawer, make sure that's turned on. Otherwise, that's what happens. All right, pry bars. Couple of sets in there for various sizes. The green handle set, obviously this is the old handle. And then here's one of the new handles. I lost my mini one. And when I went to go purchase this, I could not get it in this old handle. And let me tell you something. I have two pry bars with this handle. I'm gonna get it. So I have this little guy. I'm gonna go on a rant here. And this big ass stubby one. So this is the like their huge giant one, except it's the short version. Uh, I like to call it the call it the Excalibur. But this new, I guess it's not new anymore. But this style handle is garbage. Your hand slips, and you do not get anywhere near the grip strength as you do on old style. I much prefer this old style. That's just my opinion is what it is. I hate this effing handle right here. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Some plastic pry bars for interior work. Um, the lock punch kit. Some burbits. Don't chance on these, you get what you pay for. Get a good set. Brushes, little bowl cutter. Punches, chisels, and then this big guy. I believe this is their 36 inch. All right, first big deep drawer. Got all kinds of junk in here. Oil filters, excuse me, oil filter wrenches. Various sizes. Had this set a very long time. I've had to replace a couple, but you just hand him one and he'll hand you a new one free charge. All types of vice grips, clamps. This little tray is awesome for vice grips. I love it. Easily visible. So we have some rivet guns, pickle forks, more filter wrenches. This is for flooring. I found it in a piece of equipment. I threw it in here and I guess I haven't taken it out. The big Matco. I don't even know if they still have this anymore. I haven't seen it in a while. I'm sure they do, but um, this thing's sweet. Tire filler gauge. My gauge is like five PSI off. So I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. This thing's like 10 years old, so it is what it is. Um, let's see the hood prop. Awesome little tool there. <laughs> Quick little note on this hood prop. I found an old rusted one in a machine that was in a bob, the way back bottom engine bay of a bottom cat, I think it was, a skid steer. And it was rusted out, nothing worked, it wouldn't move, it was completely seized, even after being soaked in PB Blast overnight. So I brought it on the Snap-on truck and he warrantied it. So I got a free new one, awesome. Trailer light cord tester, must have if you're working on trucks, big trucks. A uh, bunch of random ass like ball joint kits for small cars, side jobs, and the little brake tool. Down here, not much in here, it's kind of a junk drawer. And here is the Blue Point Micro Scan 3. It's a little bit more than a code reader, but it's absolutely not a scanner. It's okay, I don't know if I'd buy it again. Just some safety glasses and books that I got for going all the classes and stuff you attend. Um, everything you get their books for and manuals and whatnot. Little fender cover. Never use this at work. This is for side jobs because, you know, big trucks and equipment you don't really need fender covers for. This is... Another angle wrench set goes from inch and three eighths all the way to two inch. Obviously it skips sizes, but these things are massive. Here's the part number. And again, you're gonna need big stuff to work on big stuff. So that gets tucked away in there. Throw the fender mat back in. 
There's the last medium drawer. And down here at the bottom. So, anything and everything in a case. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, just the ones on top. Coolant pressure tester, bearing and race driver set, some drills. This little guy right here. I'm not a big fan of Mac again, but this is one of my favorite and most used tools of all time. Just this little bit set. It's freaking amazing. Don't mind the dog hair. So I threw in just a little magnet and a pocket screwdriver in here. Man, you take this little set with any side job and it's the most useful thing on the site. Down here. Again, I can say I'm not a big fan of Mac because I have a lot of their stuff and this not so much. I'm pretty sure it's you know made by the same person rebranded, but a lot of their shit is cheaper and it's not as good a quality. Um, fuel pressure tester. All kinds of good stuff. Uh, battery saver kit. This is not the battery charger kit. This is like a memory saver. So anything uh, modern vehicles, if you're going to disconnect the battery, you just put one of their 18 volt batteries on this, put this into the OBD2 sensor, and it keeps all of the sensors from resetting. Uh, must have. Another thing I really like. Uh, for clutch adjustments on uh, tractors is this little starter switch. I don't know, part number is that for you part number junkies. Um, you just hook one on the S terminal, the other on the positive terminal, and you bump it over. So it saves you from having to turn over engines manually. Uh, you can also use it for testing the uh, starting system. Well, drill gauge, some miscellaneous drill bits, human coil set. Uh, down here is a serpentine belt tool kit. This random junk. Um, line pullers, specialty line tools. Uh, these are a must have. If you're going to do fuel lines, transmission lines, stuff like that. An old Pittsburgh torque set. Uh, don't really use that much. All right, now we'll get into the right side of the box. This is just my office drawer, I guess you would call it. So some keys, a number to call in case I get lonely, some lens wipes, stuff to write on. I put earplugs in those, they're empty right now because the set got all dirty. Um, this, Skyjack, man. So you plug this into your computer and it is every single manual they have ever written. Fantastic. Um, just odds and ends, man. Change, pens, nothing exciting. Back here is the paperwork. Tool receipts, stuff like that. All right, basically a tire and light drawer. So tire stuff, y'all know what this crap is. Valve cord tool. More tire stuff, little homemade air gun, mirror, um, tread depth gauge, some lights, my favorite light ever. This right here, fantastic. I don't know the part number. I think it's under here. I'm not gonna lift it up one handed, it's too hard. Best light in the world, in my opinion. Freaking awesome. YouTube that shit. Get it. This, these puck lights, eh, are, they're okay. They're not a focus beam light. They're more of a floodlight. So in a general purpose, just need some light. It's okay. But that's why I prefer this because it does both. This backside flips up and it'll be a more uh, floodlight. But you still get that focus beam with this. Uh, random shit. Radio puller. Blades. Scraping off decals. Electrical drawer. One thing I definitely had to do was step up my electrical game. The last company I worked for, most of the equipment is all electric. Runs on batteries. So even, well, I guess in a way all equipment is electrically run. Uh, the electrical components run hydraulic motors. So this right here, 
is their electrical kit. It's stupid expensive, but if you do a lot of electrical work, it is worth it. I do recommend getting it. I bring this on every job if I ever leave, well, excuse me, if I ever left the shop when I worked there um, or at any shop that came with. You never know what you're getting into. Some extender leads. I leave it upside down because it's magnetic and it's a total pain in the ass to pull off. Just a cheap Craftsman test light. It gets the job done. Can't tell how many volts you're getting, but you'll you'll know if you're getting at least one. Uh, these, uh, man, I'm not going to get into it right now. Don't use them, all right? Get something else. Get something better. This was my first crimper that I ever purchased like 10 years ago. Yes, it works. It'll get the job done in a pinch, but I'm not going to recommend buying that. It just damages wires and leaves them more exposed for corrosion, especially if you live in the Rust Belt. Now, the crimpers that I do recommend is this. Cutter, crimper, thingy, doodad. There's the part number. Freaking awesome. Best one I've ever owned, plus it's small. Super duper great. This is for like Deutsch connectors, stuff like that. Repinning stuff. Uh, terminal toolkit. To unpin connectors and repin them kind of what gives you a guide there uh, these break a lot so I've replaced oops there it goes that one and this one I don't know half a dozen times but blue point it's warranted good to go don't need to worry about it when I break it I get a new one and you'd say why do you break it well because Skyjack has a control box harness that needs to be repinned. We had to extend the length and uh, their design is really stiff, kind of sucks. Plus I'm not gentle, so shit just broke all the time. Meters, very important to have a good, reliable quality meter. Flukes are great. The reason I didn't get a fluke is because my Snap-on dealer is awesome. And the one I had picked out was obviously not a snap on and he put he picked grabbed this and was like listen we compared the two they're identical and he gave me the same he gave me this for the same price as the fluke uh so i was like well of course then duh let's do it and great meter love it there's the electrical drawer hammer drawer it's hammer time down here Again, green because I can and why not? So what is this? The 40 ounce, my big one from 40, 32. This is a 48 ounce dead blow. Uh, 32 ounce and 24 ounce. These hammers are really expensive, but you take this 32 ounce, excuse me, 32 ounce ball peen hammer, start hitting stuff, and then you grab this 32 ounce hammer and start hitting stuff and tell me you don't notice a difference. If you don't, well, you should go get a different job. Little replaceable tip hammer here for soft stuff. Little torch. And last but not least, this guy, junk. A sure shot couple companies I worked for didn't buy cans of brake lean they bought it by the jug or the 50 gallon drum so you'd have to fill that stupid thing up what a pain in the ass and waste of time uh some trays um last job I had uh had an overhead crane so we use these straps to just hoist stuff with the crane freaking awesome just a bunch of random gloves uh, down here is the cover for the toolbox. Yes, I did buy a cover. How are you going to spend thousands on a box and not buy a cover? Gloves. Liquid electrical tape. Uh, be careful when you're using that crap. There's better ways to make and repairs. This is for like an emergency pinch. Let's be clear on that. Some battery hydrometers, coolant testers. This one's an antifreeze tester, but there's a battery hydrometer in here somewhere. That's about it. So that does it for the Epic Series box. Appreciate you watching.